Hello and welcome to this time of online worship on this, the second Sunday of Advent. And as you can see behind me, the Christmas tree is decorated, ready in preparation for the season to come. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Andrew Race. I'm the vicar to St Edward's Castle Donington and to St Nicholas Lockington. And as has become our custom, our time together now will be a combination of prayer, a Bible reading, a talk and some hymns. Parts of the service have been filmed at other services held today. So as we prepare to worship God, let us pray. Almighty God, as your kingdom dawns, turn us from the darkness of sin to the light of holiness, that we may be ready to meet you in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. On this, the second Sunday of Advent, we will be thinking about hope and how we can be messengers of hope. So with that in mind, let us sing our first hymn, Lord of all hopefulness. first of our two lessons this morning comes from the book of Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 33, reading verses 14 to 16. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfil the good promise I made to the people of Israel 
and Judah. In those days and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called. The Lord, our righteous Saviour. Here endeth the lesson. The Holy Gospel is written in the third chapter of the Gospel according to St John, beginning at the first verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus said. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, No one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases, you hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or to where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How, then, will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven, except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee. On this second Sunday of Advent, we reflect on the theme of hope. Last Sunday we thought about love, and this week we reflect and think about hope. And I wonder, what do you hope for? What do you hope for? this Christmas? What do you hope for, for your life, or the rest of your life? What do you hope for, for the world? What do you hope for, for the planet? Is there hope, you might ask? You may recall that story of Abraham and Sarah long ago 
who hoped for a child all their life. And then one day, deep into their old age, a messenger from God promised them a child. And what did Abraham do? He laughed his socks off. Yet God's promise came true. Then years later, when the people of Israel were captive in Egypt, slaves to the ruthless Pharaoh, God promised to set them free. An unlikely character, in fact, a murderer and a rebel by the name of Moses, led them across the sea and into freedom. And what did the people do? They complained bitterly. Yet God's promises came true, and eventually they entered the promised land. And then a couple of hundred years further on, when the people of God found themselves in captivity once again, this time in Babylon, God promised through the voice of the prophet Jeremiah that in those days Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. Every time the people of God found themselves in difficulties, God's promise was to rescue them. And he did. And the same is true for us today. Whatever we are going through, our hope is firmly rooted in the promise of God that he will rescue us, he will restore us, he will refresh us and renew us. And as those Old Testament prophets voiced, we are rescued by the name of the one who is called the Lord, our righteous Saviour. He is our salvation. He is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Nicodemus, the man we heard about in our Gospel reading, knew this promise of a Messiah better than anyone else. He was a learned man and a teacher of the Holy Scriptures, a member of the Jewish ruling council, the Sanhedrin. And Nicodemus knew that one day God would send his promised Messiah. He knew that one day God's promise would come true, which is why he was so intrigued by Jesus, a man whom he recognised as from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. The question for Nicodemus was, was this man Jesus the one God had so long promised. Was this man Jesus the long-awaited Messiah? Because although this man, Jesus, although from God, he was also a disruptor. A disruptor of the temple, a disruptor of religious practice, a disruptor of institutionalised authority. And this man called Jesus claimed extraordinary things about himself and about God. This man called Jesus did not behave quite like the Messiah they were expecting. And so Nicodemus goes to see him by night, in secret, just in case, to find out for himself to see face to face who this man Jesus really is. And when in the company of Jesus, he discovers a whole new world. When in the company of Jesus, his eyes are opened, not to religion, but to something called the kingdom of God. 
a kingdom he learns entered by being born of both water and the spirit, a kingdom that is seen and lived in a hitherto completely different way. Nicodemus learns that God's promise comes true when we trust in Jesus and when we live by the Spirit. Nicodemus learns that this can only happen when we acknowledge Jesus as the Son of God and receive the Holy Spirit. And as we heard in John's Gospel, both Jesus and the Holy Spirit are gifts of God to us, gifts which we are free to choose to receive. They are gifts of love that come with a promise that when received will draw us into a lifelong and life-changing relationship with God that is good. A relationship that gives us identity. A relationship that gives us purpose. A relationship that gives us a future. A future not just in heaven, but right now here on earth. And my goodness, with all that's going on around the world right now, the continued and ever-present and ever-changing presence of the coronavirus, all the economic uncertainties that that has unlocked, the climate and factors affecting the environment, the geopolitical situation in Europe and the Russian-Ukraine border, in the Middle East and in China, doesn't the world need the promise of a future right now? Doesn't the world need hope? With God in our lives, we can offer that future. With God in our lives, we can be bringers and messengers of hope. With God in our lives, we can say to people, do not be afraid. With God at our side, we can watch and wait, not doing nothing, but knowing that whatever happens, we are loved. That whatever happens, love will win. That's why I'm inviting everyone now, between now and Christmas, to spend 15 minutes every day in prayer, longer if you wish. 15 minutes in prayer, using this Advent prayer guide. Because in prayer we draw alongside God. We become more closely attuned to what is on God's heart. And in prayer we join alongside others and their needs. In prayer we watch and we wait. In prayer we place our hope not in something fanciful or far-fetched, but in the promises of God. In prayer, we pray for those who don't yet know Jesus, who have not yet received that precious gift of the Holy Spirit. In prayer, we speak to God about people before we speak to people about God. And do you know what? Like Nicodemus, we can do that in secret. We don't need to come to church. Like Nicodemus, we can quietly get on and believe. And when it matters, we too can make a difference. We too can do our little bit of good. Whether that's buying a copy of the big issue from Diana on Borough Street, or picking up the phone and going to visit someone who is on their own or who is struggling. Because with God, as Mary heard and received into her heart during the very first Advent, with God, nothing is impossible. I hope I've spoken in the name of God who is Father, Son, 
and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's Church militant here on earth. And as we bring our prayers before God, we think of those situations around the world that are troubling right now. We think of the situation on the Russian-Ukrainian border. We think of the situation on the border between Poland and Belarus. We are mindful of all those who are seeking refuge and a safe place to live for all who are on the move during these cold winter months. And we think of those who are living in the aftermath of natural disaster, thinking especially of the people of Jakarta, with yesterday as a volcanic explosion. We think too of those whose homes have been destroyed by the recent violent winds and storms in the north of this country and in other places around the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth unity and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word, and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth, our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole counsel, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and impartially minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true faith and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and living word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name, for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, remembering especially the family and friends of Barbara and Daniels, whose funeral was in this church this last week, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples, 
that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Gathering all our prayers together into one, those spoken and unspoken, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying together. Our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. And now for God's blessing. The blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you and all those whom you love, this day and every day. Amen. Our final hymn reminds us that when God's promises come true, it's good to give thanks. This song was written by a person called Sidney Carter and is set to a shaker tune, an Irish shanty of some sort. And uh, it's a little different. So I hope you enjoy. God bless you. in the morning when the world was begun I danced on the moon and the stars and the sun I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth At Bethlehem I had my birth Dance, dance, wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance, said he And I lead you all, wherever you may be And I lead you all in the dance, said he I danced on the scribe and the fire is he They would not dance and they wouldn't follow me I danced for the fishermen James and John They came with me and the dance went on Dance, dance, wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance, said he And I lead you all, wherever you may be And I lead you all in the dance, said he I danced on the Sabbath and I cured the lame The holy people said it was a shame They whooped and stripped and they hung me high And they left me there on the cross to die Dance, dance, wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance, said he And I lead you all, wherever you may be And I lead you all in the dance, said he I danced on a Friday when the sky turned black It's hard to dance with the devil on your back They buried my body and they thought I'd gone But I am the life and I still go on Dance, dance, wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance, said he And I lead you all, wherever you may be And I lead you all in the dance, said he they took me down, but I leapt up high. I am the life that will never, never die. I live in you if you live in me, for I am the Lord of the dance, said he. And dance, dance, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. And I lead you all, wherever you may be. And I lead you all in the dance, said he. Dance, dance, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. And I lead you all, wherever you may be. And I lead you all in the dance and